dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Matthias, the last apostle to be called to the exclusive group of the Twelve, and whose vocation took a different course than that of the other Twelve uh, who preceded him, of course, with the one seat being vacated by the defector and betrayer, Judas. St. Matthias became an apostle only after the ascension, which we celebrated this past Thursday. Jesus had already gone through his passion and died, and then rose again and went to heaven before Matthias ever became an apostle. So his election then to the Twelve is unique among the apostles. And it wasn't by direct selection or calling from Jesus, but rather through the mediation and discernment of the other eleven led by Peter. And in a certain sense we could say his election was by an undeclared but de facto ecumenical council. It was the first, wasn't, it's not recognized as an ecumenical council, but there they were, all of the apostles and the principal disciples. And through the leadership of the Pope, St. Peter, they selected, and the direction, of course, of the Holy Spirit through prayer and discernment, selected Matthias, who won by lot between the two, Justus and Matthias. For many of us, perhaps for most of us Catholics, our election to become members of the body of Christ was also decided for us by others, by our parents or guardians, who did us the great kindness of having us baptized when we were still incapable of choosing this means of salvation for ourselves. Others who sought baptism after already having acquired the use of reason, chose for themselves to respond to God's calling, to the calling of Jesus Christ. In any case, whether someone had us baptized or we responded by seeking baptism ourselves, the grace of that gift of faith and of coming into the church always originates with our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all grace. St. Matthias had already responded to Christ's calling and was a disciple of great esteem among those of Christ's followers, his closest followers, when he was chosen for his ministry, chosen to take the place vacated by Judas. And once again, St. Matthias responded with the affirmative, yes. He said yes to the invitation to serve Christ. Now, not only as a believer and faithful member of the church, but as an ordained minister. And that ministry is a calling then to intensified battle, the battle for sanctity, for holiness, in this great tug of war that we're all involved in, the pull that takes us in two directions, one between the glory of Christ in eternal life, that's the attractive pull, our promised reward, for the enduring acceptance in this life of that other pull, which is repulsive, but necessary, the pole of suffering on which our Lord was first raised up, the terrible cross of the crucifixion and our crucifixion with Christ. Whether you're laity or a member of the clergy, the battle and its constituent elements are basically the same. It's always a struggle to be faithful to the cross of suffering in this lifetime of trial. 
a fidelity that leads to our purification and perfection in virtue. The election to sacred ministry increases the stakes. It's a call to follow Jesus more closely and to participate with an undivided heart in his mission of service to the church. It's more than just a matter of moral obligation. It becomes a legal duty, this pursuit of holiness for our ministers, for the clergy, for our priests and bishops. Christ calls his ministers and chooses them. And when they respond, they take upon themselves the yoke of duty which cannot be abandoned without grave consequence. Our Lord tells us in the gospel, he who puts his hand to the plow and turns away is not fit for the kingdom of God. Putting the hand to the plow means to elect humiliation, to choose to become a slave to the will of God which is manifested through our superiors. Our Lord told us, no slave is greater than his master. And our master gave us the greatest possible example of humiliation. He denied his glory, his majesty, and took the form of a slave becoming obedient even unto death on the cross. And so, his ministers also implicitly accept such subjection. At times it may be necessary that we keep our eyes on the prize, this glory, the attractive pole, just to keep our motivation up and to remind us of why we suffer. But if we become so focused on that here and now, it can spell disaster. We must not seek our own glory. All the glory goes to God. And for his servants in this life, there's the cross. But in seeking the cross, then, we experience great love and consolation because our, word, our Lord gave us this word, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When we seek the cross of Christ, taking his yoke upon us, he does most of the work. A yoke binds two creatures together, you know, the, the image of the yoke, the farm implement. And when we're bound to Christ, he does most of the work and he leads the way. And whatever portion of his burden he allows us to carry, he also gives us the strength to do so. And so this is the process by which our humanity, fallen in its nature, is transformed into glory. But a glory that won't come in this life. It's a prize that we can collect only once we've crossed the bridge that separates us now from immortal and eternal life. The, an image we sang this morning in the hymn, Holy, 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 the image of what awaits us in heaven is glorious and mysterious. We sang of the crystal sea. And that's where we're destined. We celebrated ascension just a few days ago. And our Lord told us, foretold his rising there, that where he would go to prepare a place for us, where I am, you also may be. But the road to get to that glory is not so much like the gold-paved avenues of paradise that we hear about in the 21st chapter of Revelations, but rather like the rock-strewn and terrible wasteland that Frodo had to traverse to get to Mordor. That's more 
what our life is like now. So brothers and sisters, we all have received a vocation. St. Matthias received his vocation to the ministry and to become an apostle by someone else's election, and he said yes. And he traversed that path. We wear the red garments because he, like the other apostles, all faced persecution and a violent death. But now he reigns in glory with Christ in heaven and the other apostles. We have the blessing of an ordained minister of Christ in our community here who goes by the name of Matthias, Father Matthias. We give thanks for his vocation and for that of all the ministers as well as for all the faithful. And we ask through the intercession of the blessed apostles and the queen, our lady, whose yes is the original inspiration for all the yeses of the body of Christ, to intercede for us, to always say yes to our vocation to holiness and to a life dedicated to the cross uh, so that we can be with Jesus in glory in the next life. Praise be Jesus and Mary.